Computers, email, the internet, modems, all this talk of technology has Ken and Eileen Kelly completely in the dark. I know. Sure I wouldn't even know how to turn a computer on. But like most youngsters, the Kelly kids are determined to bring their parents into the 21st century. A modem for internet and email. Da knew that, didn't you, Da? Yeah. So not to be outdone by the kids, Eileen takes matters into her own hands and decides to find out for herself just what computers have to offer. Learning points to look out for this week include making international phone calls, sending emails and a spelling tip on syllables. And don't forget to keep your Read Right Now workbook handy. We'll be working on pages 74, 100, 104 and 105 this week. The workbook is very useful to have because you can practice your reading and writing during the week. The number to ring for your free copy is 1800 20 20 65. But our first call this week is to County Monaghan to the home of Sean McCaffrey. I'm from Scotstown, County Monaghan. It's a small village in North Monaghan. It's a border county. And I live in a typical uh, farming background, which a lot of Monaghan people are in the, from the farming background. Being in school, I liked it all right, but coming now in secondary school, I was thinking about getting a job and never thought really of career-wise what I wanted to do. At that time, I thought of being a farmer, I suppose. I was up, used to doing it and brought up that way and I have more ambitions now to do things than I had when I was at school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I left school when I was 16 without any qualifications. I was in and out of different jobs but none of them really what I really wanted. I thought it was great to get out of school and start earning a few pounds but it's only then a few years down the line that you see other people have stayed on school and they've got, they've got something out of it. As there were a lot of jobs, I felt I wasn't getting anything out of it. I knew then I did leave school too early. So I had a notion of just trying to better myself, work ways, and knew sort of that I had it in me. So I called into the VEC office um, to see, and there was a computer course coming up for, like, uh, come back to back to your education. It was a 10 week course, and I uh, got through it all right. Um, I went up to Miffitt College and went for an interview and I was accepted into the college and that's what I'm doing now. And it's just went from there. Hello, everyone. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Any tutors I have experienced now, they've all been great, very helpful. There's a, like a mature atmosphere among the people. You're treated like a, like a student, not like a, a child. I'm what you call a mature student, but I'm more willing now to learn and uh, have a time to think and the in and out of those jobs made me more anxious to learn how to get this opportunity. Going back to this course helped me spelling wise, reading wise, like I think when you're out of school that long there's a lot of things you forget and uh, it took going back to that course to jog my memory to get the, the brain going again. So uh, even after a couple of weeks I could find the benefit. My spelling was getting better say if I had to write a letter or reading something, it has brought me memory back that way, jog, jogged it back into function again. Fair play to you all. I knew you were the man for the job. Yeah. I'll see you next week. Uncle Owen got the contract in Australia. Oh, that's great news. How long will he be gone? Two years. So we'll be moving the whole family. So we won't be able to play with Nancy? Not for a couple of years, love. Is there telephones in Australia? Yeah, but we won't be making too many calls to Australia. It's fierce expensive to fold that far. Yeah, I'm pleased for Owen. But it's a shame he'll be so far away. It's going to be really tricky trying to keep in touch. I've got a great idea. We can get a computer and then we can email Uncle Owen every day. But wouldn't that just run up our phone account anyway? Of course it won't. You only pay the cost of a local call and you can email anywhere in the world and they get it immediately. Well, that's handy. Yeah, let's get email. 
Wait now, children. I'm sure it's more complicated than that. And anyway, there's always hidden costs. No, Dad. It's simple. We have them at school, and I'm sure it's not that expensive. Please, can we get them? Please. Yeah, please. OK. That's enough excitement for one night. It's way past your bedtime, both of you. Kiss your dad goodnight. Good night, Dad. Uh, I know how to work computers. Please, can we go? Good night, Jim. Stick the kettle on, love, okay? If you want to phone someone who's living in another country, there are a few things you need to know. You'll find all this information in your local telephone directory, usually near the front of the book in the section How to Make an International Call. First, you need to know the access code. Each country has its own access code. The next thing you need to know is the area code. This is the number of the town or the city in the country that you're calling. The final piece of information you need is the local number, which is the number of the person you're calling. Let's look at some examples. Say you want to call a friend living in Birmingham in England. The access code for England, which in the phone book is called Great Britain, is 0044. The local area code for Birmingham is 121. And finally, you dial your friend's local number, 1234567 or whatever it is. Or perhaps you want to ring your cousin who's living in America in Boston. The access code for America is 001. The area code for Boston is 617. And you follow that with the local number. It's a good idea to write the whole number down before you start dialing, as they're quite long numbers. There's an exercise on page 100 of the workbook where you can get some practice with international dialing codes. Do you ever feel left behind? It's frightening to think how much they know about computers and we don't know. I know. Sure I wouldn't even know how to turn a computer on. Maybe Jim's right. Maybe we should get a computer. Hang on a sec. Huh? It's a flyer we got from Aircom. All about their internet services. One point five GHZ. Pentium 4 processor. It's all Greek to me. Hiya. <laughs> you need some help? Uh, yes, actually. I was thinking of buying a computer. Right. What sort were you thinking of? For domestic use? Yeah, for domestic use. You see, a relative of ours is moving to Australia and we want to be able to email him. Oh, no problem. This one here would be ideal. It's got 1.5 gigahertz processor. 256 meg RAM and a combination CD, read, write and DVD. I'm not making any sense, am I? Afraid not. Tell you what, our local added education centre left in some leaflets about courses they're running. Would you like them? Yes, please. One of the best and most useful things about the internet is email. Email is short for electronic mail and it's a quick and cheap way of sending messages around the world. In the same way that you use a telephone to send your voice around the world, a computer connected to the internet sends emails at the cost of a local telephone call. You need to have an email address to send or receive an email. Email addresses are like phone numbers. For example, maryfielder at indigo.ie the first part of the address is usually the name of the person you're sending the email to, in this case, Mary Fielder. This symbol is just short for at. The second part of the address is the name of the company that's sending the message for you, in this case, Indigo, and then IE is the code for Ireland. There are other companies that you can use, for example, Ireland Online or IOL.ie. So how do you get an email address? Well, all you need is access to the internet. Check your local library. They may be able to help you out. 
Or why not take the Kelly family's example and sign up for some of the many beginner courses. You're bound to find one that'll suit you. I'm just looking at this here now. Um, to come back to college, the social end of it is meeting new people again, it's getting back into making new friends, new learning culture. Uh, gives you a better outlook, you're looking more forward to it. It's just meeting new people in that learning environment. It's great. Once we leave uh, that class that we're in, uh, our friendship has carried on from that. Like, um, say now if we're going out and socialising, we've met a few right few friends now, and you see them in the evenings, and once you get away from the class, you can discuss what happened that day, and everybody's helps each other, and having the benefit of the friendship helps you when you go back the next morning. That's not all right, like. We dogs called Dixie, and uh, she's here now 12 years. And me and her, great, we get on. I take her for wee walks and all, she loves going for walks, and she meets me coming home in the evenings, and you see the tail wagging. So she's always there, she's part of the family, it's nice to see her, and she's always happy no matter what's going on. There's a goose up there um, called Gussie, and he's here now, he must be here nearly 12, 13 years and uh, he seems to be getting younger looking with every year. So he can be a handful of times, but me and him usually keep out of each other's way because there's no love lost. So that's him. There's a few calves, get them fed. Uh, they've all their own wee habits and they've all be individual ways of going on. There's some more friendly than others. There's some antisocial, there'll be some there, you could pet them. And uh, they all have their own sort of wee order will come down and uh, get the mail. And uh, they're, 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 the only, they're the only personalities. Hopefully I will get a job out of my education that I'm going for now and I'll have the farm there, which is, uh, it's always been there. I've been growing up in that. And it'd be nice to go to my work and come home in the evenings, have the farm there and have the, the cattle, the, be calves and all running about. It sort of takes you away from whatever other job you have in your life. It's like a it's like a hobby too, but I'm interested and it's something I wouldn't want to lose. <laughs>